Hello, I'm Tim, and this is Tim B at Sea. And today we're going to do something called a Tug 2 landing. So uh, we're going into our old dock you've seen on many other videos before. Um, but usually we come out, I show, I think all the videos I have is of us going out of this dock in push gear. So what's special about this dock, among other things, is that we like to put the barges in there stern first so that when they're loaded they can drive them straight out. So unfortunately when we went to go get this barge it was tied up at a dock that uh, had its port side up against another barge so we couldn't get in there to make up so we had to make up on its starboard side. So what that means is that when we get into the dock the dock's going to be like this and we need to come in like this so the barge will be like this and we'll be on the inside so a tug 2 landing means that the tug is going to be to the dock when we go land there so what happens is we go in there and uh, we'll get a bow line up maybe another line to hold it let our lines go and then back out and run around to the other side and push the barge in before the wind blows the barge off So that's the task at hand right now we're looking at the con hook range the Staten Island fire ferries have just gone by and uh, coming onto the range right now and our dock is just about at about 12.30 or 1 o'clock the way the camera's looking right now. <laughs> Yes, sir. One whistle agreed. I'm just shooting right into seven two and a half, so it shouldn't be an issue. Dalton, you down there? Yeah. All right. Why don't you get up on the barge? We're about five minutes away. And uh, we're going to do a tug two landing. So now we're approaching the dock here, and uh, let me see if I can move this down a little bit. This is what's kind of messed up. This is the dock we're going to see. This is the dock we're going to go to. We're going to go way up here, and there's something we call a can opener here, which is just a unfendered uh, case on. You can kind of see it up there ahead of us right now. So we got to come over here, but there's really no water over here, so we got to shoot in there, and that's why we have to do it. Uh, well, that's why we have to do a tug two landing and get it in there. Uh, stern first so that whoever gets this loaded doesn't have to back out a loaded barge where it gets a little tight. So that's the reason why we're doing what we're doing.
Okay, so we're doing seven and a half knots. We're getting a little close here, so I'm going to start bleeding off some power. The barge is light, so I anticipate that it shouldn't have any trouble slowing down. Um, I'm a little concerned because we're getting 15 knots of wind off my port quarter. And uh, the good news is the red predictor line keeps showing that the tide is working on us more than the wind. In other words, the red predictor line is going this way, and the wind wants to blow us this way. So that's a good sign right Very now. Nice. Lima Charlie. All right, so my AB is walking out onto the barge now, and he just did a radio check. He and I have the con. Uh, the barge captain is talking probably to my engineer. He's over here gabbing away. <laughs> He's been here for a long time, and... Uh, it <laughs> gets, uh, I think, uh, he gets a little bit more quarter than anybody else does because uh, he's been here for a long time and everybody likes him. So you can see that last case on. The reason why we call it the can opener, once again, is because there, it, I think at one time it may have had fenders on it, but it doesn't now. And if you leaned up against it, it would just tear a hole in the side of the barge, so... What we have to do is get around it and then get the bow cranked over to the dock and uh, see what we can do. zoom in on the chart a little bit more there we go now this dot that's right there that's that's nothing to be concerned of that's one of these other marks that they put on the chart I'm not really sure what that's who put that there or why but it's there isn't anything right there we'll just stay in the white hopefully now I'm Got all kinds of room. I can see down the dock now, the straight of the dock there, and that's the flat of it, and that's what we need. So I'm cranking the, the bow around because remember, when the bow comes over, the stern goes over towards that blue section, and I want to get the bow over so that I can keep my stern in good water because it's a narrow little slot that you have to go in here. Okay, now because we're moving at four knots, I'm just come down to one engine now. Doing the inboard engine. Uh, still hard over trying to get the engine. Very good. Okay, so now I'm going to ease my rudder. And by easing my rudder, you can see that red predictor line. That should start to straighten out. Well, what I have to watch out for is that 15 knots of wind that's blowing me off the dock because I don't have the water. You know, when, when I was making seven and a half knots, I had the water going by the barge, which was kind of keeping me, like, keeping me going straight. But that red line's coming over all the time. I want to bend my uh, bow a little bit closer. I'm actually going to start twin screwing to slow us down a little bit. We're down at 3.2 knots now. And I want to get that bow of the barge right over there. Because, like I say, everything's blowing me off the dock and onto that shoal. The shoal's underwater right now. Well, I guess you can see some birds over there. But Okay, so now I've got a good angle on the dock. I'm still going to twin screw, but I'm going to put my rudder hard over. And what this is hopefully going to do is get set up so that when I go... Turn it 25 wide and maybe 130 as we get close to our spot. Very good. Okay, so now what I've done is I set the rudder up the other way so now I can twist around and try to bring the stern back closer to the dock. I've got to keep him close so that he can get a, get a line. All right, Dalton, what's going to happen is you're going to have a line. You're going to catch a line because the wind's blowing me off the dock all the time. Once you get a line, then I'll be able to flatten out. So don't worry about the stern so much. Just make sure you get me a line and uh, find the bollard that you want and bring me, you know, guide me right to that bollard. Yeah, Roger. I'll probably end up catching it right here, and then we'll have to change it to get spotted. But uh, yeah, we'll keep bringing it along here. We're at five wide, 
Okay, very good. Okay, you said we're at five wide, so I'm going to slow down and lift the bow out a little bit. Okay, there we go. Yeah, we pause. This set of bowlers is about 30 feet ahead of us. We can pinch it in right on there. We'll throw the line down. We'll walk it back. Very good. I'll start pinching it over now. Yeah, five wide. Let's move up. We'll have a 15 ahead to get close to the rest of those bowlers. Now, in a perfect world, I'd be a lot closer with the tug to the dock. But I'm, I'm, I'm not in that perfect world because the wind's blowing me off. Okay, so now i got to set my rudder up. Oh, they missed. Okay, so I don't want to crash into the dock, so i got to stop. And we got to have him haul this thing up quick. Luckily, my AB took over, and he's going to try to throw it now because he knows that I'm blowing off all the time. It's imperative that they catch this line. There he goes. He's got it. Good job. All right, we're going to walk that line back, probably about 30, head for it to be a four spring. We can start bringing our head here, Tim. Outstanding. Good job, man. Okay, so my rudder's hard over to port. So I want to come ahead, but I, what I really want to... Open it up very wide, open it up to five. What I really want to do is get my stern over so we flatten out a little bit. Now the bow is going to come out, but as soon as he tightens that line up, we're going to—it's going to it's gonna, uh, jam the bow over into the dock. I'm coming ahead here at five, holding the bow, opening up to eight. Ten on the bow. I'm going to wrap it up as soon as we get that line over there. Yeah, good. Wrap that up, and then I'll work against it because I'm blowing off. Yep. So now while they're doing while they're doing that, I'm going to be just kind of trying to work over that way if I can. Very good. Okay, very good. So, so now the line is tight, I can work against it, but I have to be cognizant of not jamming the bow over. If I just drive ahead, that line will pull the bow right over. When I say the bow, it's really it's the working bow, it's the stern of the barge. Yeah, you know what we can do is, what we, like, like you were saying, once we get flat, once I get flat up against here, uh, I can back up and you can suck some of that line back up. Yeah, so me and Joe were talking, I'll have to take some up once we get settled in here. Yeah, about 10 foot off the tug, coming in back there, and uh, about 12 on the bow. Excellent. Port spring coming slack now, about 5 on the tug, close, close back there, holding at 12 on the bow. Okay, now... About 3 on the tug, coming in the 1. Okay, you know what, I'm going to lean up against that line to get the bow over, alright? Yep, roger that. So what happened was I was concentrating too much on getting the stern of the tug over and I didn't notice that the line was going slack up there which means that the it was falling off. So as it was falling off I uh, I, I need to drive into that line to get the bow over. Very good. This is definitely not the prettiest job I've ever done, but the wind is blowing and the tail end of this hurricane that just went by. So I think we'll be okay with it. Anyhow, just doesn't want to get that last bit over there. Come on, come on, baby. There it goes. Okay, I'm going to start backing up.
Very good. All right, here we go. Okay, you can see how quickly it falls off. See, the wind is blowing, so I don't want to put too much strain on that line. I'm going to let that line come tight. Set my rudder up the other way. There we go. i got to watch the bow to make sure that the bow doesn't go into the dock. And if you notice, this dock has a really good amount of spring on it. When I was backing, when, right as I was backing up, the bow went over and pushed on the dock and uh, sprung in and sprung out. And that's just exactly what it's designed to do. And it helped me out quite a bit there. So quite fortunate for that. All right, so now we're just sliding over nice and easy. And while we do this, this is a good time for me to go and talk to traffic. As far as they're concerned, we're going to be checked out. Traffic from the Elk River. Yeah, we're all uh, secure over here at uh, two and a half to seven. Very good, thank you. Okay, so you say that you say that's good right here. All right, so we're going to have to do something else. Um, if we got to wait for a, a document or whatever, the wind's blowing so hard that when I let this thing go, I'll never get around to the other side of the barge before the barge blows off. So if we got to get a document to get a line, that's fine. Or if you think you got another idea, let me know. Yeah, we'll probably need a document. I don't see any way to get down here. All right, I'll make a call right now. Alright, I finally got somebody and they say they're sending somebody down. Okay, but I uh, just want to catch a couple more lines up here wherever we can. Uh, some go back and lines closer to midship and then we'll break down and get them over. Yeah, if you can catch one back by Joe's office back here, that's the one that I'm really worried about because when I back out of here, the wind's going to blow that bow right over and I won't be able to get over there by the sh shoal water. Okay, yeah, I can try. Oh yeah, you you don't have to throw the line from there. You can you know, send him an even line. Wait till the guy shows up. Nah, challenge accepted. I got this. Ha <laughs> ha, Superman. Let me get you a cape. <laughs> ah, it's good having uh, a good AB with a zest for throwing lines. Anyway. I suppose I should probably leave this on so you can see if he if I shut the camera off, you know he'll make the shot. If I leave it on, there's no way in hell he's gonna make this shot. That's a that's a good twenty five, thirty feet there. <laughs> he doesn't even have enough line out. Now, the reason why he pulls it up so quick like that is that when it gets wet, it gets heavier and heavier, and that line weighs a ton when it's dry. When it's wet, it doesn't get any lighter. So, after uh, putting up a second line there to keep us from being able to back the barge up, I come down out of the upper house, go to the lower house, set up the camera here for you. Now, you're not really seeing much, but what we're doing is we're disconnecting... Uh, the stern line we usually we're gonna do that and then we come up and uh, what I'm trying to do is do this out of sequence take in the bow line then the last thing we do is gonna take in the shoulder line or what we call the towing strap and we do that because I know that the barge is gonna to wanna to drift away from me so I'm holding it close to it as long as I can then I back up 
and then shoot around to the other side. And what you can't see over here is the underwater, uh, I mean, just a few feet off the stern is a big rock pile that extends the whole length. It's like, like a slip, so it's just a just long enough so that when you, the barge is up against the uh, dock, you can you can get there. But anyway, I put my AB up to the pigeonholes. He climbs up there, and then we put the rest of the things away. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you liked the video. And uh, as always, I'll see you guys on the one.